Yeah. Ministry of the Department of Small Business Development is trying and going to, to do its best to help small businesses in the township economy uh, to save them from the challenges that they're facing at the moment. And uh, we now have the Minister of uh, Small Business Development, uh, uh, Stella Ndabeni Abrahams, on the Zoom. Uh, Minister, thanks so much indeed for joining us and thank you for your patience as we try to re-establish communication with you. Thank you so much, Peter, and thank you for having me. Of course, we have to stay patient with you guys. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, Minister, take us through um, the thinking and uh, why you had to make this critical decision to help small businesses in the township economy. Well, you will recall that like any other administration, we do assessment of the work that we've done as government. We identify gaps in the economy. And one of the critical gaps that we identified was the fact that there is a gap between the township and rural businesses and the urban businesses. And as we talk about small businesses having a serious responsibility of creating jobs, we therefore needed to make an intervention to bridge the gap between the township and the, and the, and the urban uh, businesses. This is how we came about this program to say, what are the programs that are driven by entrepreneurs in the townships? When we launched the scheme, we were looking at eight uh, categories, but as the time went on, we realized that we have confined the entrepreneurs in the township and rural areas to some services that are basic, but these are the people that stay without electricity. These are the people that still don't have access to connectivity and many or most of the infrastructure development that has to happen. It is in those areas. That's why we said now we are reopening the, 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 the scheme to all sectors that we have and therefore all entrepreneurs can apply. The next question I'm sure you're taking interest <laughs> on, Peter, is how much are we giving? Yes, We started indeed. with 350000 that we're giving to the entrepreneurs in a form of blended financing, which means a 20%, 30% of times is that of a grant and the 70% is that of, 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 of the loan. Now we've increased the scheme to, to 1 million rands with, um, with 100,000 as a maximum towards grant. So if you are borrowing 100,000 from the TRAP scheme, if it's 100,000, we provide you 50% of what you have taken. And then if you go above 100,000, it doesn't matter if you go to 900,000, but our cap of the grant is 100,000. Six months payment holiday, and then you start paying the loan and on terms that we've agreed on, but the interest remains at 5%. All right, let's talk about uh, those lo the loan part because um, I, I'm thinking that chances are you're helping those businesses that probably couldn't get financing at the banks, which puts them in a category of risk. Is this a risk that you've calculated and are happy that uh, you will get those monies back? We do check those because we also regulated through the NCR. Uh, because the scheme is operating under under CIFA, which is regulated, as I indicated. But ours is not to punish. Remember, ours is to bridge the gap from what the commercial banks are not doing. It's to focus on ensuring that the developmental dividend is paid for by the state or we de-risk all that the commercial banks and other financiers are complaining about. That's why our scheme has the bland, the bland component to say we've got to take into consideration that you may not be able to pay certain things. But at the same time, if we do realize that you were blacklisted wherever that you're blacklisted, but we also have to make sure that we don't uh, allow for reckless lending. And therefore we check that and we encourage you to then reach an agreement with whoever that you are owing. And in six months, you should have paid that person so that as we get into the pre-investment support that that we provide to those that are financing. Indeed, we are accountable that we can, in confidence, say you are a responsible citizen and therefore we can entrust you with the taxpayer's money that you're offering to yourself. What are you finding that most of these businesses need the money for? Um, if they get it, how will it help them? Many of them, as I said, mm. we've increased the scheme to 1 million rents. But the biggest um, uptake is at 20,000 rents. It's the, it's the people in the beauty industry, those that are in the hair salons, 
it's those that are providing hawker services, it's those ones in the Chisanyama business, but now we're seeing a good crop of those that are in the ICT mm -hmm. space. We're looking forward to getting those that are in the solar energy space because we, as I said, we're opening up the space to all sectors. But for now, it is dominated by those that I've highlighted. The day-to-day -day services that people get to mm -hmm. consume, but others, of course, are saying, Minister, we want to go bigger. We are opening spaza shops. We want our retail, and they're also looking at franchise. And we refer those ones that are looking for bigger schemes on other schemes because it's just the township and rural enterprise program that offers up to one million. The other schemes that we have, they go up to 15 million rands. All right. So what are we talking about? Are we talking about businesses that exist already looking for working capital or are you actually helping some businesses to get off the ground? We're doing both. Mm. At some point when we were saying you must have six months uh, in operation, but we realized that we are prohibiting those that have good ideas but do not have access to funding. So we said, let's start from ideation phase. Mm. Let, as long as you can prove that your business will make sense. And that is why we introduced a compulsory pre-investment support so that we can take you through the process and be certain that by the time we provide you with funding, indeed you're ready to receive funding and we provide post-investment support to make sure that you stay in business and we provide mentorship because many of the small businesses, they fail because there's lack of mentorship. There are a number of other issues uh, that we were reporting on earlier, and one of them is criminality. We heard about uh, payments being made for protection, inverted commas, and even things like uh, people being kidnapped. So I'm guessing that you have to work with the uh, uh, Department of Police, for example, to make sure that the scheme gets off the ground, because once word gets around that these businesses are getting funding, I'm sure that they make them vulnerable at the same time. Well, indeed, unfortunately mm. for our country, there's lots of criminal activities that are surrounding mm. our people. And of course, small businesses are not immune to that, which is why we work with everyone, including just the locals, to say you report a crime when you see it. It is our responsibility to protect businesses that are in our areas. But what we do is not to dish out cash. Mm. To businesses mm. all the time. We provide equipment if you need equipment of a particular amount and then we give you in trenches the money because we also consider it that if you've never had one million rands and all of a sudden you have one million rands, you may end up wasting on that mm. and not being able to do what you have to do. So that's why I emphasized earlier the need for the pre-investment and the post-investment but also working with the entire ecosystem that must mm. promote the business and that must protect the business. Indeed, we've had of incidents where people are being bullied out of businesses. If you go to those that are running the guest houses in the hospitality industry, uh, the stories that we hear are really shocking. Where mm -hmm. public servants come, they're supposed to sleep there and eat there, but they demand change. They like, give me my money, I don't want to eat here, I'm going to sleep. If you're not giving my money, I'm leaving. And now because Small businesses are vulnerable, they end up giving them those money. And this is the engagement we're having with National Treasury and the Department of Public Service, including other corporates to say, we have a responsibility to protect small businesses. Because that's another criminal activity that we have not paid attention to, just like people that are asking for bribes for other people to access the grants or whatever financial support that we provide. All right, and how do these um, entrepreneurs get to you uh, to get this funding? Where do they go? www.sifa, as in S-E-F-A, dot org, dot Z-A. You go to products once you arrive in the, or once you land in the website, mm -hmm. in the web page, you go to products, and the products are listed there, different products. Make sure you read the requirements so that you don't just apply in a scheme that is not relevant to what you need. And of course, if you can't go there, you follow us on our social media pages or you go to your nearest Cedar branch and you ask for the information and they will help you. How many businesses are you hoping to assist? How big is this fund, for example? For this year, we've set aside about um, 690 million. Uh, we've spent about 500 in the previous year, 
we continue to see the demand on the scheme. Uh, but what we're doing, as I said, is to say we open, we used to open for a particular period and close, but now we said let's keep it open because people think of building businesses every day. All mm -hmm. we're doing is to say we want to see if the South Africans are going to take all of that money and then we can go and make a case uh, to the National Treasury and other financiers that can partner with us. Minister, it's been great talking to you. Thank you so much. And uh, I'm sure it's great news that you have for many uh, young and uh, uh, upcoming entrepreneurs that uh, you're coming with this assistance. Thanks so much indeed. Thank you so much, Peter. And don't forget to remind the viewers that we have the, uh, the presidential inaugural SMME Awards on the 13th of November, followed by a conference, an SMME conference on the 14th to the 15th. All People right, have been nominated. Watch out if you participated. Fantastic. And that's a conversation we'll certainly have with you again. Thank you so much for your time tonight. Thank you so much, Peter. All right. That's uh, the Minister of Small Business Development, Stella Dabeni Abrahams, talking to us about this important funding uh, that's uh, uh, available to uh, entrepreneurs in the township economy. Uh, small businesses that are uh, wanting to uh, leg up and uh, start and uh, uh, progress. All right.